So Ed Traub, I might be saying that wrong, um, but the username E-D-T-R-O-B over on YouTube has posted on our last uh, episode. I think it was our last episode, or maybe it was one before. I'm yeah, not it was. Sure. It was two before, and it was specifically two, two on the the Rust is coming for Linux, uh, yeah, Linux. segment. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, so we talked about how the the Rust drivers and and whatnot are are being more accepted, if you will, into the Linux kernel. So, um, and you know the whole drama behind all that. So, this was the comment based on that episode. Three issues, he says. The first is Rust licensing. If the kernel is written in Rust, it's no longer open source. So we may or may not get to the other two issues, but we may this, not. Is, this is something that... This, this one we really want to talk about, yeah. Yeah, because uh, we, we were talking about it in the pre-show, and it just continued to spark and spark mm-hmm. and spark just additional conversation about what the heck is licensed and what isn't licensed. Now, right. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, you sure? and last time I checked, Dan hasn't passed the bar yet. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I'm very formally dressed here, but uh, not not a lawyer. You're spruced up, ready for court. But yeah, um, yeah. So neither of us are are lawyers. But uh, I think mm, there's a conversation to be had here, right? So mm-hmm. initially, I had responded back. Rust is Apache MIT, so certainly open source, but maybe not quite the definition of FOSS unless I'm misreading you. But as Dan and I started to talk about this, I think that line was irrelevant. So we did some research, uh, you know, and I found a Stack Overflow. It just, I know it's well, not. All the, the real answers are on Stack Overflow. <laughs> <laughs> but it made a lot of sense to me, and I'll link that. Um, but some of them might not be open standards, you know, per se. You could you could have a language that is private and used for by you or your company and only you and your company. But that also means that nobody else is going to be able to write stuff in your language because right. they don't know it. It's not an open standard. Right. And um it means, you know, so like no plugins, add-ons, modules, none of that stuff is going to happen um if you've got your own language. Could you imagine bespoke languages? I think they exist, but I don't know what they are. I don't have internal examples. only. Like you have to take an oath before they before they teach you the language. I I promise yeah, you probably to got never. An NDA that you got to sign and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, probably. Like if you were hired on by a company and said, "Hey, here's our thing. Uh, by the way, you can't you know distribute this at all." Whoa, um, that that okay. I, mean, I, that, I guess that sort of thing happens, right? I guess I mean, so. It would it would definitely be uh it it would be a spinoff of JavaScript. It just has to be, man. Look at all yeah. the languages out there they're all weird <laughs> javascript uh morphs of some kind or another yeah that could be yeah i don't yeah. know but uh, but also this is kind of uh this is kind of taking the bait a little bit right because the mm-hmm. the original comment was if the kernel is written in rust and well i don't think we're even a decade yeah, we're not we're not talking about that much anyway because like we're just talking about some drivers and stuff yeah right yeah. attachments add-ons things that that enable right. things uh, written in Rust, attached to the generally written in C kernel, right? Uh, but maybe one day, maybe one day. Maybe, but I think if you were to start now, you'd be a while before you got the yeah. whole thing written, you know? Right. And But uh, but uh, it, it just kind of brought up, like, um, a bigger question, because sure. wouldn't C have the same kind of Achilles heel if that were the case, Right. And it, it it turns out it can't, because if you look at it, then the Linux kernel would then have to have inherited whatever kind of license or any kind of anything that surrounds C. Yeah. And then the Linux kernel would have that, have that but, you, but it's not. We checked the Linux kernel is all GPL2, and things that aren't GPL2 are yeah. compatible with the GPL2, and I yeah. have a sneaking suspicion... C is not GPL2, and Rust is not GPL2. So it doesn't, I I don't think that it makes a whole lot of sense to say that you inherit the licenses of the languages that you're, that you're writing software in. Yeah, certainly. I don't think so. No. And, and, but like, uh, and it's very explicit when you, when you find it, 
like I asked Leo, I was like, is it a mixed mixed uh, bag of uh, licensing on the kernel? And Leo looked it up. Yeah, I, I assumed before I even looked it up, I was like, well, probably GPL2 and GPL3, right? Like, sure. Right. But no. But, <laughs> yeah, no, it is only GPL v2. And um, with that, I think I've, I've, I've heard mention probably from Linus and other interviews and whatnot that uh, – I think he prefers GPL v2 for for things um, for whatever reason. It's fine. Yeah, it's um, it's just but viral not, enough. Not free. Yeah, yeah, it's just viral enough to to you know you can't get anything in the in the kernel without it being GPL2 compatible yeah. at least. Yeah, it, it it seems like part of the gatekeeping there. Honestly, if you don't have the right license applied to it, it's probably not gonna they aren't gonna accept it. Right, right, uh, but. GPL three, the I, I think uh, if I understand it correctly, oh, it's more which restrictive. I probably don't, um, but yeah, like anything directly attached to GPL three code also has to be GPL three or GPL three compliant, something like that. Like it's yeah. it's viral in that way, like is an an infectious kind of virality. Yes, it is. It is more restrictive. So whereas two is a little more permissive, right? Um, uh, and I mean that it's done so well. I I I can't. It stood the test of time. Yeah, I can't see where he's wrong. I mean, the kernel has made it into absolutely everything, and mm -hmm. the tooling around it has all kinds of weird licenses. No telling what those licenses could right. possibly be. Um, but you don't have to, right? Um, that's no. kind of the beauty of it all. So yeah, that was that was a bit of a bit of a it had us threw us for a loop a little bit and made us think and uh, we actually went and did some research on it, and so that's that's what we've come up with is the. Uh, not not really. The languages themselves do not have uh you know licensing. Yeah. And and even if they do, they don't transfer, right? Because you're creating Correct. something totally new using the language right. uh that is yeah. licensed. It, the code and, you're right. Now the code you're right is definitely got a license to it that you right. need to determine as the code writer what license you want to apply to it. And yep. And uh I think a lot of people end up uh choosing things like Apache and MIT. Um, yep. and then, and then realizing, oh God, no, now I can't do anything with it. <laughs> I mean, you can do whatever you want to with it, but so can everybody else. Yeah, everybody else. As yeah. in, mm -hmm. yeah, commercial wise, like. <laughs> Even, yeah, monetarily. Right. Yes, oh, exactly. Poor Redis. I don't, I forgot what, what, uh, the original license they licensed Boy. under. They, um, they, they've gone back, I think now. Right. right? Yeah. That, that was the whole thing, right? Like Redis chose a very, very permissive license. Amazon seized on that, uh, yeah. started using Redis internally. Uh, Redis yep. was like, no, not like that. Uh, even though they explicitly, with their licensing, said yes, like and that. Then they wrote their they wrote their own license, right? Then yeah, ev everybody yeah. fleed. Everybody that there was one yep. last good fork of Redis. People took that and ran with it, and then everybody else went to the fork. Um, and now Redis is like, oh no, everybody left. Let's go back. Go back. <laughs> yeah, I was just and, kidding. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work like that. You <laughs> you scare the chickens out of the chicken house, the hen house, the whatever. Uh, then they they don't. Yep. The coop? They don't come yeah. back. That's probably not true. Chickens probably go back, but um, you know, chickens might go back. But listen, so, so, my metaphor yeah. is strained. Mm -hmm. I need you to come along with me on this one. Okay. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I'm with, I'm with you, buddy. <laughs> Good. Good, because I think I lost everybody else. I scared everybody What's else the... out of the chicken house. Yeah, I mean, the fox is still in there, so the chickens might not go back. Whoops. Uh, Amazon was the fox, man. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind talking a little bit about the second uh, the second issue. Uh, talking we about, can. but oh, so so just to to reiterate, this came from our conversation about Rust is sneaking its way into the kernel, right? And um, it's going to happen more and more and more. Uh, Linus and Greg KH have basically said, you know, if, if Rust is is the solution, Rust is the the solution. Um, so the third, uh, the second issue with uh, with that from, I'm going to say EDT Rob. I'm gonna I'm gonna go against your grain there, fine, Dan. Fine, uh, yeah, I'm, you can. Could be a Rob. It could be a Rob. Says maybe. Uh, how many CVEs have been found in the kernel and core utilities over almost 30 years? It seems rather secure given the size of the project. I think that's kind of a uh, kind of missing the forest for the weeds there. I, I think the sentiment of this is that there were issues. They were found. They were fixed, right? And that's, right. that's been chugging along for 30 years. And that in and of itself is security especially when you look at how big right. the kernel uh actually is so so i, I turned that comment into yeah yeah no there are people watching it 
very closely and very attentive, kind of leading back to the first topic we had. Yeah. Um, that, you know, people are all hands on deck when, when one of those things probably gets disclosed. Um, right. In order to get it fixed as quickly as possible, given, you know, the prevalence of of the Linux kernel out there. Yeah. Right. They and understand the, the gravity that that goes along with it. Exactly. And and I, I think that's a I think that's a weird kind of point to bring up because a lot and I mean a lot of the uh security issues that have been found in the C code were memory centric were these buffer sure. overflows underruns yeah, yeah, yeah. all, all these different kinds of oops i yoinked memory from over here that i didn't have access to and yeah, you know yeah talk about your fuzzing thing right that's that's disclosed some of those things you know uh, you know exactly and and th someone else on on youtube i, I should have grabbed the the quote um said that you know just writing in rust doesn't necessarily make it safe code and that's that's it very doesn't. true that is very yeah, true doesn't. And and yes, C does have guardrails to prevent some of this stuff, but we keep seeing code with these same exact types of uh, of problems, yep. memory centric problems that Rust just doesn't really allow. And yes, in Rust you can turn off the guardrails. You can that will you prevent you from from doing this kind of stuff. But it. It just seems to me that writing in the language that that tells you ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, in the first right. place, and then when you turn those guardrails off to be able to access the stuff that you're accessing, to then end up in buffer overflow territory. It's like right, man. There were signs all the way down that said road mm -hmm. ends here, and you kept driving. Yeah, Maybe. the warnings were on the screen, and you ignored it. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a different way. Uh, to to solve that particular problem, yeah, and I and I think it all it really does probably depend on what you're dealing with and whatnot. So I mean, yeah. it's not a be all end all, right? We're not. We're. I don't think anybody was ever proposing that the whole thing gets rewritten that way. I, I think am. just. Well, maybe eventually someday. <laughs> but, I mean, I no, see not it. right now. No, no, no. I think the approach that they've been taking is very methodical, yes. very cautious, and you know, like the, those sort of things. It needs to be baby steps not a sprint um yeah. and it, it needs to be that way it just it does it's it's too too prevalent and too important that there's no room for failure back to the cve thing i think as many have that have been disclosed probably get solved before release because of that methodical yeah a cautious approach to things and the testing that goes on with all of it. I mean, like you see multiple RC, you know, re release candidate, you know, every single version of the Linux kernel. Mm -hmm. And that is so that that testing can get done and, and things do remain safe as much as possible. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, Rob, I'd, I assume EDT Rob. <laughs> I don't mean we're just going to rename you Rob now. Okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, Rob. Um, <laughs> I, I do not mean for this to come off like this was not no, adversarial no, no, yeah. at all. No, your, no, no. Your statements, your questions, they did make us think. Yes, were uh -huh. extremely thought provoking, and I really enjoyed going down the rabbit hole of uh, like mm -hmm. the licensing thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah about that was that. fun. Uh, well, if, if you know more than me we'll and it's, looking, but it's, yeah. it's, it's quite possible, um, you know, follow up because I would love to know where, where I, where I steered wrong on that. Uh, and same that, I mean, that goes for absolutely anybody that is smarter than me, which is again, most, um, let me know if, if I I'm off I'm in right the weeds every here. Time, but I mean, what we're batting 300, right? About as good as that That's AI. That's fine. Good enough. That's better than AI. <laughs> Come on, we're better than AI. All right, I'm batting 400, baby. Yep. We're there. Mm -hmm. We are there. <laughs> as, as long as I'm smarter than AI in most of yeah, the situation, better. I guess you know, <laughs> then I guess we're okay. Um, and then I won't be replaced with an AI anytime soon. Uh, one of these days, we'll just AI generate this this show, right? Oh no, 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 no I hope not. <laughs> No, that show was done. I mean, that's that was Tabs versus Spaces or something. I think. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. That was an interesting show, uh, but it, it was all handwritten. Bad. I listened. It was it was all written it was, by it was. a human. No, but it was just spoken by a yeah. computer. 
as far as we know, it was written by. Well, I mean, a human. I think it was. There were links and stuff. I don't. Yeah, I, I think the timing was that it was before the first AI model, right? Like, it really was. Yeah, but it okay. was good stuff. Maybe, maybe the guy, maybe that guy was working on the AI models and the whole thing, whole thing. Yeah, that's that's fine. It, 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 honestly, that was a pretty good use case. If Man, it was pulled the wool over my eyes, and that's why they're itchy. Well, catch these and other great topics and feedback as they unfold on our Lemmy subreddit news channel on Discord. And for that feedback, that's going to be over on YouTube. We've uh, we've dug a lot of gold yeah. out of YouTube this time. We did. Um, yep. Man, because we've gotten a lot of feedback over on the YouTube side. That seems to be where it's all flowing right about now. Hopefully that's not AI generated. Uh, you know what? Uh, for forty percent of it, forty percent of it's probably oh, generated. Gosh, I mean, it's probably. It. Uh, well, forty percent of the emails telling me how to do tags on a on a video are definitely oh, at least forty wow. percent are AI generated. Get our SEO up. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to give us human responses, uh, you can do that over at Lemmy. All of these things, by the way, are LinuxUserspace dot show slash Lemmy. We got a Reddit, we got a Discord, we got a Mastodon, we got a Telegram, we got a Matrix. Um, you can swing over to the Twitch, uh, and you can still find us over on Twitter. I think we got, I mean, the Instagram, the threads. Yeah. The... Um, blue the Sky? Tick, we have the, got Blue the, Sky? Oh, the Blue Sky. See, I need to update this. See, we I got do. a template. Yeah, we do. I need to update the template. I think uh, maybe the other one has it. I don't know, but yeah. Uh, probably probably not. I'm I'm bad at maybe that. not. I don't know, but maybe. Anyway, uh, so find us over all at, at all of those places. Uh, interact with us. Give us some feedback. Uh, tell me how I'm wrong. Because uh, again, yes, please. Forty percent. Forty percent of the time, I'm wrong. A hundred percent of the time, you know. 